Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another episode of How to Burn Down Your Model Railway. Okay, just to kick things off then, a little bit of a disclaimer. Now, I might have embellished the video title slightly for comedic purposes, but to be absolutely clear, Hornby's products are all perfectly safe to use. None of their motors really have any sort of fire risk with them. Some of them may be a little bit unreliable, and some of the ones I'm going to show you today certainly failed in quite a spectacular fashion. But as long as they're used properly, there is no chance of you causing a fire with them. So the purpose of this video is not to put you off Hornby. Don't stop running or buying Hornby engines. That would be very bad. But just enjoy the video and uh, find out some of the things I have learned. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about motor failures. Obviously, with a collection as large as mine, you should expect a couple of failures once in a while. And the manufacturer from which I have seen by far the most motor failures is Backman Branch Line and Backman USA. In fact, all of these locos you can see right now are locos that I've actually had to make repairs to in terms of the motor or replace the motor entirely. The thing is with those though is that they don't fail in a spectacular fashion. Most of the time you just get a little wisp of smoke, maybe a bad smell, and the loco will slow down or probably just stop. And then you've got a choice, you could rip the motor out and throw it away or and buy a new one, or you can try and repair it in some way. But it's not particularly exciting. But there is a kind of motor that I have had really bad experiences with. There's a kind of motor that actually fails in a much more exciting way. Maybe exciting is not the right word. But those motors are these. These are the sort of Hornby, I think Type 7 or Type M open frame motors. With these, I have seen some crazy, not explosions, but some effervescence, let's say. So let me tell you about them. The first one was many, many years ago with my first Hornby Class 58, which runs on a similar sort of motor. Uh, probably not exactly the same, but it's still an open frame. So this was running along quite happily when all of a sudden I heard loads of commotion from it. It was sparking. In fact, even though the body was on, I could see the sort of sparks coming from it. There was loads of smoke. There was a really, really nasty smell. I took the motor bogey out and the motor was completely fried. I looked at the body on the underside and it was all black and charred. The motor had failed in a crazy way, so I had to get rid of it. Uh, the next time I remember this happening was with my Hornby Terrier, and I actually caught this on video, so if I can find the clips, I will show them to you. She was running along, possibly pulling a few too many coaches, and suddenly I noticed she was stopped. I took the body off to see what was going on, tried to run her again, and once again, loads of arcs, loads of smoke, terrible smell, loads of heat generated, and the motor was fried, and I had to replace it. And a couple of months ago, the same thing happened with this, the Hornby 14XX. Once again, I was just giving it a little run, and there was loads of noise from it, loads of flashes of sparks I could see from the inside, loads of smoke, and the thing was dead. And the thing with this 14XX is that I've not actually repaired it at the time. I thought, oh, not again, I can't be bothered to fix it. So today what I'm going to do is, well, mainly I'm going to fix it. I'm going to put this motor into it and hopefully repair it. But I'm also going to take the old motor out, take a look at it, and see if we can find out what might have caused it to fail in such a spectacular fashion. See if we can find out why motors of that kind seem to fail so regularly and uh, maybe have a little bit of fun along the way. First of all though, I've not tried this since it eventually failed, so we're gonna give it a little test. I've been trying to think, why might these motors fail? One thing I thought of is possibly over-oiling, because if oil gets inside these motors onto the commutator, it can cause problems. Well, I don't know if that's true or not, because I service my engines every year, right? And I, I am guilty of putting a little bit of oil onto the motor armatures just to keep them running sweet. But at the time this one failed, I hadn't actually had chance to service it yet. That doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't over-oiled, but it means that if it was, it must have been done at the factory. Another possible reason is overloading, because I do remember that this uh, Terrier of mine was pulling a few too many uh, coaches at the time of its failure. But again, I don't really think so, because once again, in the case of this 14XX, if you remember back to its review, the wheels with the traction ties don't actually touch the track, which means even if you did overload this loco, it would just wheel slip way before the motor was under any kind of strain. So I, I want to find this out. So let's get this onto the track, see if it will do any explosions. And uh, if not, we'll just take it apart and take a look inside. 
All right, let's find out whether this is entirely fried then or whether it's still capable of kicking out some fireworks. And I am not kidding, when this one went, it was like a thermonuclear meltdown. It was crazy stuff. In fact, I had to leave the room because the stench was <laughs> so unbearable from it. Anyway, here we go, full power. I don't know if it's actually drawing any current, but I'll jostle it. Yeah, see if I can smell anything. Don't think so, no. I'd, I'd think you'd get some arcing, wouldn't you, if there was uh, any power there whatsoever. Uh, let's give it reverse. I don't think it's doing anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart and uh, take a look at the motor and see what the fallout was like. It's had a couple of months to... Oh, oh, there, there is smoke. Did you see it? Was that, was that clear on camera? Did you see the smoke? I've switched it back on. Come on, I want smoke. Yeah, I can see smoke coming out of the cab windows, interestingly. Right, well, I'm going to leave it there then, see if it develops. <laughs> yes, there is quite a, a bouquet coming off that now. Oh, but it's not a lot of smoke, as you can see. Uh, it's definitely not doing what it was before. Uh, you knew about it when it happened before. Um, but obviously, yeah, it's not completely open circuit. So I'm going to cut this off because <laughs> I don't want it to be red hot when I take it apart. I don't want to burn my fingers on it again. And uh, yeah, let's take a look and see what it's actually done to the motor, see if we can find out any more about it. So the first step, of course, was to remove the body, which is a right faff with these, it must be said, because they've got all these pipes that uh, need to be disconnected before the body comes off. Either way, I got it off in the end to reveal the motor, and as you can see, it was completely seized up. It was not turning at all. So I didn't know whether perhaps the mechanism had seized up and caused the motor to burn out, or whether something had gone wrong with the motor to cause it to seize. So to find out for certain, I took the motor out. So when it was out, it kind of hit me really, just how tiny these motors are, especially compared to the likes of the Triang X03 and X04s, which of course do the same job, they take the same voltage, they pass similar amounts of current, but this tiny Hornby one, this modern one, has to do it in such a tiny space, maybe they're just getting too hot, maybe they're not up to the job. Another thing that crossed my mind is maybe they fail so spectacularly because they're just open framed like this, so any smoke and sparks and arcing can issue free and make itself known a lot better than it could, let's say, if it was sealed inside a metal chassis. And obviously because it's open, oxygen can get in a bit more readily and suppose that might help combustion a little bit. Either way, it was still badly seized up, so I decided to take it apart and find out what was inside. Now, I don't recommend you do this, it was a bit dangerous doing this with the pliers, but I did manage to get it open, and this was my response when it actually came apart. Oh, ho, ho. this thing is a mess. So, the first thing I've noticed is that junk dropped out of it when I, when I opened it. There's a bit of brush there and a bit of metal. Looking at the inside of the sort of brush housing, you can see that it's just completely stained brown, as though there's been some sort of serious meltdown inside there, and there's nothing left of the brushes whatsoever. The commutator is just charcoal. There's nothing left of it. It's just completely blacked and burnt out. The coils themselves look absolutely fine, so there was definitely something went wrong. Something melted down on that commutator. I might try and clean it up, but the brushes are gone, so there might not be any point. But yeah, that is astonishing. Let's try and clean it. I wonder then, do you think one of the brushes maybe broke off and shorted something? Because it, it's very reminiscent of how that Terrier failed. I never actually, I didn't know enough about the, oh my God, I thought that would come off. That's welded on, hang on. Can you see that? That bit of brush is welded to the commutator. That is not coming off. Anyway, yeah, I was gonna say, I didn't know enough about fixing motors when it happened to my 58, but it was definitely something similar with the Terrier. Man, look, that is not coming off. That is, no, that is absolutely tated. There is no fixing that. Look, there's, there's stuff stuck. Yeah, great things welded to it. There must have been some serious current to weld this on. I wouldn't have thought 12 volts at one amp could have done that. Man, crazy. 
Anyway, I decided I would fit the replacement motor and see if I could at least get the thing working again. Uh, so it was reasonably simple. It didn't have the um, TV suppression capacitor slash choke or whatever you want to call it on there. So I fetched that off the old one and soldered that on. It was easy enough to do. And as you can see, yeah, now it's all back together. So we'll take it down onto the track and see if it actually works again now. Okay, let's give it a touch of juice then and see if it actually goes anywhere. Oh yeah. Oops, my uh, the oil I put on it has uh, shot up. I didn't put any oil on the actual uh, armature, just put a little bit on the worm gear there. But as you can see, it is now working, which suggests that mechanically at least, it is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with the mechanism. It wasn't the mechanism jamming up or something. It was definitely the motor. So that's good. Now, one thing I didn't tell you is that I actually ordered two of these motors. <laughs> One's gone in the loco. The other one I thought we'd do some experiments with. I'm going to try overloading it. I'm going to try over-oiling it. Let's see if we can actually reproduce that crazy failure. Should be interesting. Right, so I warn you now, this is probably going to be deeply unscientific. So I'm going to try an overloading test first. So I've got the motor grabbed in a vice. I just love the dodginess of all this. And I've got an ammeter hooked up. I've also got an HM2000 controller hooked up, which is capable of putting out a, about an amp I've managed to find. I'm not going to overload it electrically, although it would be fun to stuff 70 volts into it, see what happens. Uh, but obviously, no, that's not what happens on your normal model railway oper operation. So I'm going to try and grab the worm drive with this uh, rag and just see if I can put some resistance on it there, see what current we can draw and see if it goes thermonuclear. And of course, the best thing about it will be my hand will be right there if it does. So uh, yeah, don't try this at home. Let's give it about half power, see what it does. So we're at point 0.1 amps there, although that's without a load. So very tentatively, <laughs> I'm going to try and grab the worm. There we are. And that's put it up to about half an amp. Ooh, nasty. So I'm going to leave this to go for a little while. I can already see smoke. Man, that did not take a lot of doing. I don't want it to go over half an amp, really. <laughs> oh, I've got that smell. So maybe they really just are not cut out for this sort of thing. We'll see. Um, yes, it's, uh, it's rather fragrant, to put it politely. <laughs> There's quite a lot of smoke coming out of it. I bet this is what's done it, you know. I bet it just couldn't handle it. I'd love to know how hot it's getting. Oh, I don't, shouldn't really be, oh, whoa, whoa, ah. there we go, something happened. Oh no, no, it's still going. Um, oh yeah, that's probably cooking. Oh, I didn't even get to over lubricate it. I can see lots of arcs coming from the brushes. Give it a bit more, full power. Yeah, I mean, that's similar to what happened. It's certainly not gone full on meltdown. But uh, yeah, so the moral of the story then, is it warm? Oh, yes, it is incredibly warm. Moral of the story is don't overload them. If you've got a loco with a motor like this in it and you like the loco, don't let it pull too much because it seems to be that. Uh, keep them serviced, keep plenty of oil on the bearings and make sure there's no fluff or anything on the mechanism. And um, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's probably it. This thing is toast already and it did not take long. Nah man, it's toast, it's done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. That was quite exciting. I rather enjoyed that last part. So thanks for watching. Um, stay safe. Uh, don't mess around with motors unless you sort of know what you're doing. But for the most part, don't worry. As you saw, that wasn't actually that dramatic. I have had more... Dr Oof, that is red hot. I have had more dramatic failures in the past. But uh, yeah, luckily that one wasn't too bad. All right, folks. Cheers. Take care. Have a good week. Let's turn this off now. <laughs> or I'll burn the house down for real. All right, that's enough of that. Leave the rug there, see if it sets fire.